Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse and to a brand new video taking another look into the history books of Doctor Who, exploring the times of famous friends and foes from the show. In series 2 of this little series I've been focused on the more obscure aliens from the show like the Corsair, the 456 and the Flood and many more. And today is no different as I take a look into the past, present and future of the Shoal of the Winter Harmony, also known as the Harmony Shoal. These big blue brains in a jar were capable of taking over planets using their most powerful people against them. Every leader from a species captured then their own brains thrown away and are replaced by these brainy baddies. The Shoal of the Winter Harmony are actually pretty mysterious, we don't know what planet they come from. All we really know is these creatures migrate from planet to planet so don't go losing your heads as they featured in a couple of episodes with some great schemes and themes to explore including the infiltration of UNIT. Now the only telltale sign that someone has been replaced by one of these brains is a faint scar running diagonally across their face and extremely bloodshot eyes. Sometimes blue liquid in which the brains are stored escapes from the host's body. You could say they are multinuclear organisms functioning as an infinitely adaptable, independently functioning parapathetic central nervous system, being able to transfer to a new host with super speed and able to use their bodies to store weaponry or currency. Basically, they always keep an open mind. Now at some point they were conquered by a vicious dictator who went by the name King Hydroflax, the butcher of the Bone Meadows, a tyrant and a murderer, who certain factions of the Shoal of the Winter Harmony worshipped praising the actions he had taken, however their own conquests seemed completely self-motivated. The Shoal attempted to invade Earth in 2016 using the business Harmony Shoal as a front. They had offices in every capital city on Earth, specifically these locations included Washington and Tokyo, with the corporation's main headquarters being in New York City. From an outside perspective the business seemed successful, however to a trained eye there was something shady about this organisation. The two businessmen, Dr. Sim and Brock, entered a vault where brains are being held, unbeknownst to them, a journalist from the Daily Chronicle named Lucy had actually followed them, having disguised herself as a cleaner. Now Brock tells Sim that he knows that the brains were donated by the benefactors for a secret project that even he is not allowed to know. Dr. Sim then tells him that there are more brains in there despite no deliveries being made to Harmony Shoal. Then it all becomes clear, as the doctor watches from afar, Brock is told to tap the glass of a container. He complies and suddenly the brain inside sprouts piercing eyes. Scared, Brock punches Sim in the face, dislodging the right side of his face and spilling some blue liquid. Sim puts his head back in place. He isn't Sim anymore and he points to a tank without liquid, which he says is the brain of the real Sim. They switched containers. Brock asks what happened and Sim states it's the same thing that's about to happen to him, a change of mind. As Brock is converted, Sim finds the Doctor, Lucy and Nardole. Trapped and held at gunpoint, they are saved by New York's very own superhero. The Ghost, a man named Grant fused with a rare alien gem called the Hazandra, fueling his wishes as a child to be a hero. At Harmony Shoal, Sim greets his brother Brain, now in Brock's body, despite Brock's skull being too small. Sim assures his brother that it will soften with wear. Sim shows him footage of the Ghost, who they believe is the finest vehicle available on the planet. They watch footage of the Doctor, who suddenly shouts, Boo! It turns out he's right in the next room. The Doctor tells the duo that he offers them mercy and won't follow them off the planet if they leave now. Taking that as a declaration of war, Brock opens his head and pulls out a gun. The Doctor tells them that they are just another attempted invasion of the planet which will fail like all the others. The Doctor continues to investigate as Lucy attempts to understand the ghost's identity. Nardole and the Doc locate a ship orbiting the Earth, dormant, the lights off, the security low and with the secrets of the Shoal's plans contained within. They discover that the corporation was in fact a front for the Shoal's plot to extract the brains of key world leaders. The Shoal planned to blow up New York City using a rigged spaceship to show that Harmony Shoal's headquarters was the only building capable of withstanding the impact. With a building like that in every capital city, the rich old men, the authority figures, would have to turn to them for safety and security, at which point the Shoal of the Winter Harmony would have replaced their brains and using the world's leaders' puppets, preparing the Earth for full colonisation. Fortunately, the Doctor has a plan to save the city and the world, all the Time Lord has to do is crash the ship himself and aim for the right rooftop. The rooftop, a certain superhero and Lucy are being held hostage by Brock and surgeons waiting to convert Grant into the most powerful vehicle for the Blue Brains. Grant hears the Doctor, he's using the sonic screwdriver to speak to him on a frequency only he can hear. The Doctor tells Grant to stop the ship or all life in New York will perish. Seeing he can't keep his dual life a secret anymore, Grant tells Lucy to duck in his ghost voice. Moments later, the Doctor shakes Nardole awake, telling him that a shock absorber stopped the ship from blowing up. In the streets below, hundreds of people and police watch in amazement at the sight of a spaceship seemingly floating on a rooftop. On the roof itself, Grant tells Lucy he's sorry for not telling her as he holds the ship in one hand, flying away with Lucy before her setting the ship into the sun. 
Meanwhile, Brock calls the doctor at gunpoint, but is told to give up as a helicopter from unit has been sent to close their head office. The doctor disarms the alien as he warns that Harmony Shoal's vengeance is known and feared throughout the five galaxies. The doctor isn't too concerned, he's defeated gods and demons, fought in the last great time war, defeated creatures as old as creation itself, so some mad minds in butchered bodies aren't that scary. However, this is where the story gets interesting. At Harmony Shoal's office, the workers are being forced to leave the premises, a unit soldier comes upon Sim's body, which is now empty. There's no alien in there, the, the replaced brain is just an empty shell. He asks the soldier who found it if the body was already like this. He confirms it. The officer states that he'll put a call into Osgood. Unit needs to be on alert for the presence of this rogue alien. The soldier turns around after his superior leaves, revealing a long scar on his face to avoid capture. Sim transferred himself into a new body. So on the 1st of January 2019, the Doctor attempts to contact Kate Stewart following an invasion attempt by the Daleks. However, this it was unsuccessful as she discovered that unit operations were suspended due to funding disputes. So by the end of the 2010s, the Doctor believed unit to be gone, alongside Torchwood too. I like to think funding disputes is a great cover-up story for an internal takeover attempt by Sim who crippled Earth's defences as much as possible, eventually being captured, but not before the damage was irreversible. Now sometime in the far future, orbiting the planet Deridium, a starship called Harmony and Redemption, full of the universe's criminals, tyrants and monsters, was the setting for a trade-off between Riversong and a representative from the Shoal of the Winter Harmony who went by the name of Scratch. Scratch was there to trade a fortune in credits compatible with every bank in the galaxy for the Halassi Andravor Diamond. It is the most valuable one in the universe, and it was lodged in Hydroflex's brain during a raid on the Halassi Vaults. The sale went ahead as River had posed as Hydroflex's nurse and had stolen his head, shoving it in a duffel bag. River gives him the bag, telling Scratch he might need a spoon to dig for the diamond. Scratch then reveals that he filled the meeting point with members of his own species to ensure an honest transaction. The Doctor and River now panic as they discover that Scratch and his gang worship King Hydroflax and are after the diamond in his honour. Despite attempts to hide the bag's head containing the diamond, they are forced to reveal the truth to create a distraction. Those considered heresy to try paying for the king, the Doctor laughs, he can't be much of a king if he can't put a price on his head. They toss Hydroflax away and flee, only to be stopped by Fleming, one of the ship's staff. Oh, and Hydroflax's huge red robot body, I forgot to mention that bit. River asks the Doctor where the safest place would be if a meteor strike were to hit, and the Doctor tells her right where they are standing, as it doubles and is an escape route. Fleming asks what she means as the speaker announces the meteor's arrival. He asks River how she could have even known. Smiling her usual smirk, River tells him that she's the archaeologist that dug his remains up in the future. The meteor's hit and the floor gives way, allowing the Doctor and River to flee into the lower floor. The pair then escape to the TARDIS before the ship crashes on the planet's surface, killing all that were on board. Every single Harmony Shoal member that was on that ship, now gone. And that is the history of the Shoal of the Winter Harmony so far, a species that have vowed to have their revenge but haven't cropped up since. The brains in the blue goo might not be a massive threat right now, but it's still a great design for a monster that left on a cool cliffhanger with Unit's future thrown into chance. With all that said, thank you very much for watching this video. What are your thoughts on it? Remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to experience some bonus rewards, then be sure to check out my Patreon page like Time Lord Tier supporter Stefan Pastran, who gets to see a selection of my videos 24 hours before anyone else, receives a shout out and brand new downloadable poster every single month. If that sounds like things you would be interested in, then check out my Patreon page, help the channel grow and get some awesome rewards. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.